نعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم رب يسر ولا توسر وتمم بالخير رب اشرع لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي صدق الله العلي العظيم Dear all, Assalamu alaikum. Hope all of you are in good shape. And if someone has, is not well, we are here to pray for him. Well, after that, we come to our pharmacology. Over here, we are dealing with endocrinology. You study these <coughs> topics there in physiology and something about it in your <clears throat> biochemistry so you are all female all familiar with the physiological effects of uh, these male hormones the part which is assigned to me this about the male sex hormone before that you have studied female sex hormone and about the male sex hormone you will also be familiar with androgen, the word androgen. And in that <clears throat> well-known drugs, the androgens, they, you know, testosterone is one hormone and the other one is the dihydro <clears throat> testosterone. So, the major one is the testosterone circulating in body. And before going to that, <clears throat> let's have a few words about the history of these androgens. It's something history dates back to the ancient Greek. So in that, the name of one philosopher, Greek philosopher is there, Aristotle. Most probably in Urdu it's known as Arastu. And he was student of <coughs> Plato. And most probably that will be of Platon, if Platon. So, Aristotle, he born in 385 before Christ and died in 323 before Christ. It looks something very strange that is rather upside down. Anyhow, you can, you have to concentrate, what is it? So what he observed, he observed the effects of castration on the <coughs> physiology and the reproductive system. He observed and that's fertilization, castration and fertilization. As you see this word castration, you might have seen the animals before your <clears throat> this kurbani which, which is a head, and you see the animals which are castrated, they have, have different phenotype. And in men, they also have effects on the shape, also the effects on the psyche, and further <coughs> secondary sex characters. Secondary sex characters. You may recall all these things and what are the effects of endogenic hormones. So, as concerned the <coughs> advancement 
about the testosterone. This was discovered in 1935. 1935 by one <coughs> scientist. His name is Andrest Lecure. Andrest Lecure. L-A-C-Q-U-E-R. Lecure. He isolated testosterone from <coughs> that from bull testes. And by the same year, <coughs> two of the scientists, one of them is known as father of this endocrinology, they also synthesized at different places the testosterone. One, he was in Gottingen, 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 G O T T D, Gottingen or Gottingen, and the other in Basel. So <clears throat> this was about the initial work on this testosterone. As the testosterone was not that very stable and it has got <clears throat> very high first pass metabolism, for the reason other sorts were found from this testosterone. So to make it stable, to make it long acting, to probably. Before that, why the castration was done? Castration was done in case of slaves, even in troops to get revenge. Castration was officially done in Ch China and there was institute uh, in collaboration of China and the uh, Germans, they may produced uh, those licensed doctors who could do this castration in human beings. In China, these castrated people, they were given very high posts, high ranking <coughs> uh, status and they also ruled China for certain decades. The castrators, they were, they were known as eunuchs, eunuchs. This testosterone, because of its effects on the phenotype, then the physiological effects, fertilization, and so many other effects, anabolic effects, they were, <coughs> used for doping. Although it's not allowed, but still uh, unofficially they are given, I mean, taken by the athletes, bodybuilders, weightlifters like that. So doping and the dope test is something very important and all the students should know about it because uh, you come across the news about the athletes or different players and the dope test. In 1950, such arts were formed to have long acting effect. And at the same time, the androgenic activity and the anabolic activity that was compared. So after that, we come to some parts of it later on in the slideshow. First of all, from where is this testosterone or the male hormone is produced? You know, it's from the leading uh, cells of testes and also some quantity by the arenas and a very small amount from the ovaries. So it's the basic source in human beings. About the structure, these are steroids. You know the steroids, the steroid structure. There are five rings, three, uh, four rings, four rings. Three of the rings have got hexastructure cyclohexane and one is 
known as uh, that has got <coughs> pentane penta structure cyclopentane cycloxane cyclopentane and there are 17 carbon atoms and at position 17 uh, there is hydroxyl group OH group and there are small differences in the structure of the male hormones and the female hormones. In the these steroids, the androgenic steroids at position 18 and 19 there are methyl groups while in case of estrogen a female hormone well known at position the position 19 is free so it's something about the basic structure all of you should know because number of drugs they have got the steroidal structure and for that reason they have certain common effects about the production of these uh, this this testosterone one should know at the time of birth the amount of testosterone is equal to that of an adult while after one week the production in the infant that goes down and again at the time of pu puberty it increases with the passage of age as the age increases so there is further fall in the level of testosterone almost 1% each year. While compare, comparing this testosterone with the female hormones, the estrogen one, in the estrogen it suddenly stops in case of menopause while the that the level of testosterone that goes down gradually and to have strength people get injection of it for a number of reasons you will be told later to know the amount of uh, testosterone in the body it is the uh, it is the uh, reduction it is the sorry the analysis or the quantity which is measured that is the 17 keto steroid to know the level of the testosterone in body its amount is the 17 keto steroids that is calculated in urine analyzed in urine further testosterone certain metabolites are there which don't have this this are androgenic activities those metabolites are like the androsterone isoandrosterone you are all familiar i mean how they this production is controlled you know it's the uh, they are under the control of uh, hypothalamus gonadotropin releasing hormone over here it is the luteinizing hormone you are all familiar with the hypothalamo hypophysial adrenal axis so the luteinizing hormone attacks on the testes and there is production of uh, testosterone and the growth of the secondary sex characters so this system like the other hormones, it is under the feedback system. Feedback system. So this is one thing. As concerned the action, I'll tell, I'll show you the these slides and we'll discuss them. As far as the anabolic effect of certain and androgen, so they what they do they have got positive nitrogen balance positive phosphorus positive sodium positive potassium level and the protein synthesis that is enhanced so muscle mass is uh, rather stimulated 
another action uh, that's also very important where in certain anemias aplastic anemia and related condition they are taken as drug of choice after that we come to the uh, next slide here you see why we study this male whenever there is deficiency so you have to give these hormones for a specific period there are special indications you should be you should know where to give and where not to give say during pregnancy you will not give especially when there is female child or if the male hormones are given to females or the female hormones given to male so the adverse effects they will appear coming to the learning objectives uh, you may be asked just name certain uh, androgenic preparations androgenic preparations so uh, you have been told that about the testosterone it was not that stable and one t- another steer uh, sort was formed that was methyl testosterone and that was kept under tongue and uh, because of the hepatotoxic effects of methyl testosterone and cholestatic jaundice that was removed from the market then second one the clinical application number of clinical applications are there uh, you will be told later on and the toxicity then this viva question is also there just write few anti androgens so the anti androgens uh, th- those which <coughs> work uh, uh, as uh, like the even the female hormone they are taken as anti androgens there are specific drugs in the synthesis of the testosterone where the enzyme which is involved that is inhibited or uh, there is anti androgen there are certain drugs you should mm, know you have to enumerate them rather then another substance it is known as finasteride then another question why a question is there named the anabolic side i was telling you that some of the uh, substances they are they have more androgenic activity some have less androgenic and more anabolic so for uh, where anabolic activity the wasting disorders are there so you have to give the those anabolic steroids will i'll give you the names of these anabolic steroids later on in the coming slides well, again the same thing clinical applications and that of the uh, toxicity no don't have a pen and a pen copy with you tox adverse fair toxicity side effect number of terms are there you should be familiar with the, what is being asked over here well coming to the after the learning object androgen then the same thing one male sex hormone introductions you have been told in the introduction before that in the right in the first slide the produced by testes by the lead cells and also some quant from the adrenal and some quant very small quant from the ovary here after that from where is it synthesized is written over here progesterone and then dehydro happy androsterone dehydro it is dehydro another one is dihydro that will come later on in the plasma testosterone is partly bound to sex hormone you know when the hormones they are acting you should link the, those hormones to the receptors and they are carried by proteins over here there are sex hormone binding globulin sex hormone binding there is sex hormone binding globulin so with that it moves in the body and it shows its effect then after that again it written over here the next testosterone 
uh, which is a it is the diehard row testosterone and uh, over here it is written that in the prostate is converted the testosterone is converted to dihydrotestosterone so how is it formed and then oral preparations why the oral preparation metastosterone was not stable uh, rapidly metabolized by and liver and main excretion was through uh, through urine for that is unstable source were firm so the testosterone preparation generally they are given by injection and they are in oily preparation not on oily preparations form of long acting esters they are given in oily preparation and also uh, deep intramuscular also in addition there are transdermal patches you will be told i mean there are multiple reasons for which these uh, testosterone they are advised now the orally active variants are also available that androgenic preparations for men when there is deficiency of these hormones the certain replacement therapy replacement therapy Uh, related drugs they are given. I mean, certain other sorts they are formed and they are given if there is deficiency. Written over here, one is methyl testosterone. You have been told uh, again and again that uh, is this it is effective orally, but it is, is now it is uh, hepatotoxic and cholestatic jaundice may be there. Next one is fluoxetine, also effective orally. Then injections are there. Some injections they work for, say, for a week, while the others they work for, say, three weeks. Testosterone in antheid. Testosterone cipionate. <clears throat> And again, one preparation is written over it that uh, testosterone transdermal. and topical gel all after that replacement therapy you will come across this word this word the whenever there is deficiency so the hormone may be given like that in case of steroids in case of insulin in case of that uh, thyroid hormones so hormonal replacement therapy next one how they act the action it is repeatedly shown and how the steroids act it is the same and all the students should be able to draw the picture uh, how they act enter in the cytosol uh, the and then they combine with the receptor and that complex is formed that complex that goes into the nucle into the nucleus and further there is modulation and the further release from the nucleus at the level of uh, uh, say the uh, i mean the for the final if to read the final phase, there are genetic uh, to- genes they are targeted so all the students should draw that picture very common repeatedly at different well the effects pharmacodynamic this testosterone is required for the normal development of the fetus and infant it brings about changes at the time of puberty and then responsible for secondary sex characters you are already told you have been told then required for fertility there is one potency there is one word libido and this word is another word is fertilization and the potency related to potency is impotency so they these are given at multiple sites 
Then for normal bone density, it was seen among the castrated people that there is early kyphosis bone density, a weakening of the bones. So if there's a <coughs> testosterone, it is not uh, available due to castration. Then the effects on the hair cell. There you know the male pattern of baldness is there. It is one of the one of the physiological effects. Uses. Again, replacement therapy where there is hypogonadism and again after that another thing is breast engorgement. In case of postpartum in case of postpartum period. Here my students should note down there is a difference between postpartum and postmortem. Write down please. I may ask you later on. In the postpartum period and usually in conjunction with estrogens. Another indication is endometriosis. Endometrium. Endometriosis. Then another after that, replacement therapy in the postmenopausal period. Replacement therapy in postmenopausal period in an attempt to eliminate the endometrial bleeding. So, if in the case of postmenopausal period there is endometrial bleeding and they may be given replacement therapy to treat that. Here is special indication. Someone, sometime asked in your viva, when to be given the male androgen hormones. Here you see the chemotherapy of uh, breast tumor. Over here, this breast tumor, it is an inoperable, no doubt, inoperable breast tumor. And there are, meta, there are metastases. So if the tumor, breast cancer is there and there it is premenopausal period, then they may be helpful. In postmenopausal, so different uh, other hormone they are given. Then toxicity, adverse effects of endogen, you have already been told, the, when the male hormones are given to female, are not given at proper time, say during pregnancy, though they will have toxic effects, are given in high doses. You know there is feedback mechanism. Rather, you are giving these <coughs> male hormones, other hormones from outside, there will be suppression of inside of the body, endogenous production that will go down. Toxicity of androgens. You, if they are given to females for a longer period for one reason or the other, so <clears throat> there will be virilization. This virilization may be even during the uh, pregnancy if the female infant is, the female fetus is there. So what will be the effect you are all familiar? Hirsutism, hirsutism. And large clitoris, and the voice will be deepened, deepening of voice. And there may be menstrual irregularities. Another thing, the word it is written about the effect of these male hormones on the lipid profile. So they have bad effect that they increase LDL and decrease HDL. All you know, HDL, it is cardio uh, uh, protective and it's a good lipoprotein, you know, so it, will, it would be the adverse effect. The third one, the big dose is given in men. So there will be, uh, you have been told that, there will be suppression of, of the endogenous production you are given from us. So it may result rather in feminization. At the at first step, what you see, the virilization is there, and over here it is feminization. So what will happen in case of feminization? If you are giving excess dose of androgen, testosterone, or its preparation, 
So there will be gynecomastia, testicular shrinkage, azospermia, and there may be oligospermia. Just not, not written over here. Then another adverse fact is acne. This acne was also written when <coughs> you are told that when taught about uh, the steroids, the steroidal substances may produce acne. Another thing is sleep apnea and there may be erythrocytosis. Come to the next, where not to gagan. You have already been told about it, that in case of pregnancy, you have to be very careful, especially when female child is there. So the next one, if the prostate cancer is there and you are given these are <clears throat> these androgenic substances, though may, there may be rather further <clears throat> proliferation or further extension of the uh, cancer in case of prostate cancer, so they are they should be avoided. Then, if heart disease is there, or the <clears throat> renal disorder is there, you have been told that 90% of testosterone. And that is created by the, the kidney. Few words about the anti-androgen. Number of substances they have got anti-androgen like activity. Some written over here, and while the other I, I'll tell you, you will note in your note. Here you see it's the formation of the testosterone and the enzyme required over here is the 5-alpha reductase, 5-alpha uh, reductase. If this one is inhibited, so there will be no formation of a well-known drug written over finasteride, finasteride, you remember it. Then here in the next one, you see the receptor blocker. These receptor blockers to come across this word receptor at, at many places, like angiotensin converting enzyme, you know, in American angiotensin receptor blockers like that, receptor blockers. Over here, I mean this, and the, this hormone is produced, but that cannot act on the uh, receptor, endogenic receptors. You know, you have been told that they are in the cytosol. So well-known drugs, you must remember their name. Go on writing again and again. I know these all these medicines are new for you, and you have to write them because you have not used them. You have not seen the, the, the medicine. Even then, what I have observed from my experience, the students can pronounce some of the medicines and it is duty of the teacher to tell what is important or which one is not important. So trust written over here, especially if you go through this list, spironolactone, lactone, all of you are familiar with it. If not familiar, again go through it. Spironolactone, you have already studied it. Then ciprotarone, then flutamide, at least remember three, Please write at them again and again to let them stay in your mind. No doubt, it is very volatile subject and one has to be very careful. Here is another very important drug that is in common practice, not only here. It is the synthesis, steroidal synthesis, even at other places. That is inhibitor, it is ketoconazole. You will study this medicine while, <coughs> while <coughs> teaching you about the fungal, fungal infection, fungal infections. There's a, almost one lecture on that, ketoconazole. Don't forget it. You might have studied rather earlier, even at Sullivan. Few medicine not written over here, and they have got uh, this uh, anti-androgenic activity is uh, like the cimetidine, note it down in your cimetidine, H2 receptor blockers, cimetidine. You were taught in GIT, cimetidine. 
that has got anti-androgenic. And other one, in case this plant, I mean, this herb, you can say, uh, the mint, spare mint, pepper mint. What is mint? You should know one of the spices. That contains phytoestrogen, phyto, from plant, phyto. As well. Just please note down, uh, you will be asked later on. Here is the axis, well known axis. At the high level, the gonadotropic releasing hormones, they are coming, certain substances, they are acting on that, and that release. And after that, in the, in the, here you see the pituitary, they act on the pituitary, so gonadotropins, they are released. Of import, the gonadotropin, which is of importance over it is the luteinizing hormone, which one is the other one? Note down. FSH. And then these testes, uh, they produce uh, this uh, testosterone. Further here you see uh, on right side, ketoconazole. It interferes with the synthesis, ketoconazole. Synthesis of the testosterone and spironolactone, it is a receptor blocker. Here you see the further testosterone formation. And again, another enzyme is acting on that. That's the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. For if this 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, the second testosterone, that is the dihydrosterone, and that is not for. So the drug acting at that level is the finasteride. Finasteride, please remember it. Here on right side, further the high dihydrotestosterone, uh, it combines with the, uh, the receptors and complexes form, and that further uh, there will be a response to the, the complex. So at the level of dihydrotestosterone, and further its combination with the receptor, the drugs acting are the flutamide, uh, Ciproteron, spironolactone is again coming over here. So this is well known access. All the students should know about it. And this is repeated at certain other sites too. Few lines about the five alpha reductase inhibit inhibitors. Just you have gone through that. So what are their uses in case of benign BPH? What is BPH? Benign prostatic hyperplasia. Just go through it. Then in case of male pattern baldness, they are helpful. In case of hirsutes in women. And then because the drug does not interfere with the action of testosterone, it is less likely than other antiandrogens <clears throat> to cause impotence. This is something important. The whole world is working on test on it. Impotence, number of medicines used to treat impotence is something very important, maybe ask your wife, impotence. Then, it is less likely than other antiandrogens to cause impotence, infertility, infertility and, uh, and loss of libido. Loss of libido, say in case of female, it is known as fagidity. Fagidity. So they are helpful in the females if there is <clears throat> loss of this libido in the females. So these drugs are given to treat that fragility in case of fragility. Then the receptor inhibitors of these androgen receptors. So they may be steroidal, non steroidal, competitive antagonists of androgen receptors. Non steroidal. This is what it comes again and again, like steroid or the steroidal or the non steroidal. 
competitive antagonists of androgen receptor, you have to go back to the <coughs> classification, back to the name, what drugs are uh, acting on the synthesis, while the others, uh, they are acting at the receptor size and like that. <coughs> Uses. Prostatic carcinoma, hirsute is and precocious puberty and boys. These are the uses and you should go through the names given previously. The adverse effects of flutamide. If there is anti-androgenic activity, what will happen? The gynecomastia is something very important. One is gynecomastia. Another is it was as hepatotoxicity and there may be GIT disturbances. Then these anabolic steroids, they were very common in past, but why they were lifted out of the market uh, for one reason or the other, they are misused. You have been told the anabolic steroids to enhance the sex, to increase weight, to make more muscles, mass. And uh, among the weight lifters, among the athletes, these anabolic steroids they were, and they are they were used or they are still misused. So giving this sort of anabolic steroids, you have been also told about that dope dope test. Dope. Here you see the synthetic androgen with higher anabolic activity. The anabolic activity and the androgenic activity, they are to be compared. These substances are chemically, they are derivatives of testosterone or methyl testosterone. Methyl testosterone is the same which was toxic. So from there, these uh, anabolic steroids are there. Well-known names are, you must remember the name, fluoxymesterone, then oxandrolone, the third one, then the nandrolone decanoid, this decanoid, previously known as decadurabolin. Say the nandrolone decanoid given, so the effect will remain there for, say, three weeks. Then another one is stenozolol. These are anabolic steroids. Uses of anabolic steroids. You have told them in these anabolic steroids, the drugs which are androgenic activity, they have got anabolic effects. In contrast to that, the estrogens, they have got catabolic effect. Anabolic steroids. One is indication is the osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. And second one has protein anabolic agents to reverse protein loss. As protein anabolic agent to reverse protein loss. This protein loss may be there in a number of disorders. Say the protein loss after surgery, after trauma. Uh, there is prolonged immobilization. There is there are debilitating diseases, prolonged um, fever is there. Certain other conditions say uremia is there. Say nephrosis, nephrosis is there. Or uh, there is malnutrition. So, these anabolic steroids, they have got their effect. Another indication, in case this is something very important, people are spending a good amount on it to get their height. So, they stimulate growth in boys if with delayed puberty. A special indication of these anabolic steroids. 
but if they are given excessive doses or too much, maybe early there may be early epiphyseal closure. Here you see, in case of boys with delayed puberty, to stimulate their growth, the anabolic steroid they are. Another special indication you have been told previously that aplastic anemia, refractory anemia, refractory anemia, aplastic anemia, <coughs> Fanconi's anemia, sickle cell anemia, myelofibrosis, myelo MY, myelo, it is related to bone marrow, myelo, and hemolytic anemia. So these anabolic steroids, they are of help. Then the next indication is uh, also repeated over here. To promote, to gain weight in wasting disorder, one example given over but there is AIDS. You should know what is abbreviation. AIDS stands for what? Go through that. Then the third one, to increase the muscle mass, muscle strength, and to enhance performance in the athletes. It's also repetition. Adverse effects. It's like the, if you go to the uh, methyl testosterone, it's like the hepatic dysfunction, cholestatic jaundice, sodium retention and edema. It is not only here, but it is with the number of other uh, substances which have got steroidal structure, uh, they, they produce the sodium retention and result in, that results in edema. And then another thing is psychotic symptoms. Written over here, these are the adverse phase, but uh, testosterone was also given, say, for euphoric effect. Here, strange adverse factor there, gynecomastia. Why gynecomastia or azospermia or oligospermia? Uh, if you are giving big doses, so there will be a, a feedback mechanism and suppression of the production. And again, you know, the another effect is of anabolic steroids is like the endogenic activity related to virilization virilization uh, and anyway, we close over here hope all the things you have noted so far inshallah we will meet next time thank you very much Khuda Hafiz